All right, so the vast SCP thing we watched was so bad, Skin's literally just picking them at random at this point, which is fine because she hasn't gotten any suggestions yet. Well, it, so I took your suggestion with this one. This is the deep sea one. Oh, you, you're watching this one? Yeah. Oh, why, you, why did you take my suggestion with this one? Because apparently I don't want to sleep tonight. Yeah, why would you do this one? I'm serious. Why, why would you pick this one? You should <laughs> do this one on your own. No, I don't no, want, no, no, I don't want to do no, this one by yourself. No, I don't want to do this one by myself. I want to do it while you're here. I don't want to help me. I don't want to do this one. I with want you. you to do it. I so just watched. Can... I just watched this one. I know, but I want you to protect me. You're not even that scared of that. This kind of stuff. You're not really afraid of this kind of thing. I don't trust. It's, nothing on the internet, okay? It's just a hoax. I played, I played Slendy Tubbies, okay? Oh yeah, you did. Sorry about the sniffles. Okay. Anyways, what up, Hope Biscuits? It's your girl Skitten, and we are here for some SCP, which you said it was secure containment protocol or something. Mm-hmm. And the other nigga said, the nigga with the lean said it was secure contain protect. I don't know what the difference is. So, I thought it was secure containment procedures. Whatever. Yeah. But is it secure, contain, protect? That makes a lot of sense. I don't. I don't know. What's the other video you shot today? R slash what? Oops, I didn't mean to. Oops, I did it again. I play with your heart. So. Still the game. Anyway. So you have still have no idea what SCPs are. Nope. They're basically like fan fiction anomalies. Okay. Um, that you know that people make. They're not extraterrestrial all the time. Um, they're more like interdimensional. That's a better way to explain it. Okay. You know what I mean? Things that come from like a parallel universe or something like that, like seep into our dimension. That's probably a better way to explain it. Okay. Because there was one SCP that they claimed that was God and that created part of the universe, mm -hmm. but even he didn't create some of the SCPs, right? Or doesn't even know what some of them are kind of a thing. All so, right. Right. So this one is SCP-3000. Okay. Um, this is from SCP Illustrated. So the guy draws his own pictures of the SCPs. Oh, in that's the video. fucking cool. It's, it makes it worse. Uh, and this one's actually quite uncomfortable. So if at any time you feel uncomfortable, let me know so we can pause and take a breather because you might have a feeling of panic or uh, just letting you know. Why are you trying to hype me up like <laughs> I'm this? not. I'm just letting you know that the ambiance is pretty intense with this one. Okay. And so I don't want it to, I don't want to use the word trigger like ironically, but I don't want you to be afraid of the SCP. Well, I'm, I'm never afraid of anything when you're here with me. Maybe. Well, that's good to know, but I can't save you from this. <laughs> so here we go. Play. Uh, play. Play. Okay, cool. You want to give us a read? All I can see is darkness. There's a chill, foul wind blowing me towards a brink I can't see on the edge of nothingness inches from oblivion. There's a sickness in my mind that I know can't be cured. Beyond me is only blackness and a single pair of black eyes. Silence, only silence. My consciousness coming undone and only and only and only and only the eel remains. So when I first read this, I was like, this shit whack. And yeah. then I and then I kept playing. I was like, this shit is whack. Item SCP 3000. You can adjust the audio and stuff. Object class thermal. Description SCP 3000 is a massive aquatic serpentine entity, strongly resembling a giant moray eel. The full okay. length of SCP 3000 is impossible to determine, but is hypothesized to be between 600 and 900 kilometers. The head of Which is like miles long. Yeah. Yeah. The SCP-3000 measures roughly 2.5 meters in diameter, and sections of the body proper are as large as 10 meters in diameter. Big as fuck. SCP-3000 is typically a sedentary creature, only moving its head in response to certain stimuli or during feeding. The majority of its body is located in and around the Ganges fan, and rarely moves at all. SCP-3000 is carnivorous, and despite its sedentary nature, is capable of moving quickly to dispatch prey. Despite its size, it is hypothesized that SCP-3000 does not require sustenance to maintain its biological functions. SCP-3000 is a class 8 cognitohazardous entity, 
Direct observation of SCP-3000 may cause severe mental alterations in viewers. <laughs> individuals who directly observe SCP-3000, as well as any individuals within an uncertain distance of SCP-3000, experience inexplicable head pain, paranoia, general fear and panic, and memory loss or alteration. Special Containment Procedures The area containing SCP-3000, currently a region of the Bay of Bengal, roughly 300 kilometers in diameter, is to be routinely patrolled by Foundation naval vessels. Under no circumstances are civilians allowed to attempt deep sea exploration or diving efforts in the quarantined area. Individual believes to have contacted SCP-3000 are to be contained, quarantined and processed at Site-151. Individuals Quarantine. affected by the anomalous properties of SCP-3000 are to be held in containment indefinitely. The Foundation submarine, SCPF Eremeta, is to monitor the location of the foremost section of SCP-3000 currently located within the Ganges Fan, roughly 0.7 kilometers beneath the bay. The Eremeta is tasked with carrying out the Aztec protocol, and staffing regulations on board the vessel are subject to the guidelines of that protocol. For a full description of the Aztec Protocol, see Addendum 3000.2. There is currently no known cure for exposure to SCP-3000. Mm. As such, affected individuals should be contained and quarantined for further evaluation. Individuals stationed aboard the scp Eremeta are not permitted to leave the vessel except for the purposes of carrying out the necessary procedures of the Aztec Protocol. Individuals who leave the vessel without proper authorization are to be considered lost. Under no circumstances <laughs> yeah. should any individual interact with SCP-3000 without authorization. Okay. I think we'll finish the description. But for the SCPs, this is a, the general gist of it, is it starts with like a description of it that doesn't really tell you anything. Right. It just, it's really vague and it doesn't, it'll slowly unra unravel as you kind of get into the story of kind of how it works. Got it. So it, it will make more sense, but it just starts out really vague and then it... Well, currently it's large AF. Yeah, it's a big ass thing, and if you come in contact with it, you're fucked, right? That's yeah. about all you know. So then they'll get into kind of what's actually going on now. But it's a good way, it actually draws you in really well. The following is a log from Site-151's historical records written by Dr. Eugene Jett after initial discovery of SCP-3000 and the effects felt therein. It's kind of like we're reading straight out of a log book, you know? The unease was felt throughout the entire crew as we descended on that first night. Whether this was due to our uncertainty of what we would discover, or something more sinister, I would not speculate. As we continued to descend, Williams began sweating profusely. When asked about it, he could not respond, stating he thought he was missing something he could not deduce. As our descent continued, he began to act more and more erratically. At one point, addressing myself as Darlene, and expressing uncertainty to the task he was assigned to handle. Similar feelings were expressed by other members of the crew, but Williams felt it the most. His mimetic resistance was by far the lowest of all of us, but he was a biologist, not a mimeticist. When we finally came into contact with the entity, he began whimpering and had to be sedated. I remember him muttering the word, no, over and over again, as if in disbelief. He went silent after a while as we approached its head, but when I looked back at him, something had gone from his eyes. He did not even so much as blink as we made our final. At around 0940 hours, we first observed the head of the entity. The unease was palpable now. Several other crew members complained of feeling hazy and of being uncertain what they were supposed to be doing. Captain Ritter, even the man's man, wrote it all off as nitrogen intoxication. I figured this drawing would upset you. Shut up. It doesn't? <sighs> It's kind of cute. Okay, I'll accept that. To continue approaching the entity. When we were within 50 meters, the entity turned slowly to look at us. Even now, as I recall, watching this thing coil around in the darkness, I can still hear Williams barking like a mad dog in the rear of the vessel. Yeah. And screaming and flailing, shouting about how he could see it in his head. Well, Hawkins and tripping. Harrison's tried to restrain him, but he got free and smashed his face in against one of the portholes. He hit it so hard, he cracked the inner layer of glass. The damage was bad enough that we had to surface. We tried to give Williams medical attention. He didn't make it. He was it. too far gone at this point. He had pulped himself against the glass, and despite the trauma, he still spoke briefly as he lay dying. 
nobody recorded it. We didn't think to at the time, but I remember it well enough. He said, there's nothing, nothing, nothing. By the time we had reached the surface several hours later, Williams was dead. At the time, I didn't think much about what he had said, just the ravings of a man gone mad by the depths. I figured I didn't know any better. Man. But even now, I can still see the eyes of the creature. I see it hanging there in the darkness, illuminated by a light I cannot source. It okay. looks like a dratini. But it wants to eat you. And it's, and it's massive. I would let dratini eat me. Well, as long, well, you know, hey man. I like the idea of I like the idea of the depression hitting you of like you know it just projecting nothingness into your mind to make you go yeah. mad you know and in in his case he just committed suicide because of it because it's Jesus it's an eel in my head and there's nothing else out there but there's nothing there's just nothing here nothing but the eel and I die dread that Williams must have felt that night in the submersible as he was overcome by whatever void that foul thing slipped out of. Discovery. SCP-3000 was discovered in 1971, shortly after two Bangladeshi fishing boats and 15 fishermen were reported missing after drifting near the Indian coast. To be honest, if you're in that kind of boat, you're asking for trouble. I mean, it's just <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere, in the smallest, dinkiest of vessels, and this thing's like, so it's dinner. Got it. You're delivering dinner. Foundation Research is stationed in Calcutta drew similarities between this disappearance and other incidents two years earlier. A thorough search aided by Mariotta Pasha counters revealed the location of the two boats, as well as an unknown previously undiscovered mass deep below the surface of the Bay of Bengal. Further investigation by Foundation divers discovered the existence of SCP-3000. Addendum 3000.1 Initial contact exploration log. Note, until this point, no foundation diver had come within 300 meters of SCP-3000. Divers were tasked with assessing the creature and determining the source of the thick gray fluid that had been observed floating around its head. This sounds like a bad idea. The dive team was compressed of three members of MTF Orion 9 Kingfishers. Are you going out MTF there? 0-9 Alpha. I'm just asking. Begin log. Alright, so here's the log of that. Situation in the airlock, I'm ready to roll. Confirmed. Go ahead and sound off. Orion 9 Alpha, check. Orion 9 Bravo, check. Alright, man, we're in position about 500 meters from the head of this creature. Make sure your tethers are on good and tight. We don't want any of you getting separated out there. What's visibility like down here today, come on? Stand by. About 3 meters. So it's dark as fuck, got it. Why are we so far out? The size of this thing is hard to comprehend and it's wrapped up in itself in several places. We can't get too close because there's too much body out there. The entity hasn't moved in about three weeks. That's all. Affirmative. It moves slightly with the currents down here, but nothing more than that. If it weren't for the head movement that we observed by the first submersible team, we probably wouldn't know if it was alive or not. That's reassuring. All right, tethers are tight. Flood the chamber. Confirmed. This sounds like Rushing a terrible idea. Heard, it's, yeah, they're the going out there. No other sound is heard for several minutes. After some time, the sound of rushing water stops. You both good? I'm good. It's fucking cold. Hopefully it won't be out for long then. It's only lights, but here we go. All members of the dive team exit the airlock. There is a low It's about to go see a giant monster. Commentary, the water's cold. I mean, it is. The <laughs> sound as the airlock door closes behind them. A muffled click sound is heard, and the Stravinsky activates our floodlights. Hey, Alpha, I, uh, maybe this is a bad time to ask, but I can't remember how to turn on my lamp, and your lamp is on Foxtrot. It... What? What did you call me? Your designation, honey. Foxtrot. I'm Foxtrot, boss. You're Bravo. Hang on, what are you talking about? I don't understand what you mean by designation. It's your goddamn call sign, Bravo. What do you mean? Who's Bravo? I, uh, shit, hang on. I was gonna say something. Barry, are you still here? Stand by. Go for command. Hey, we're having a little trouble out here. I'm not sure who... We seem to have some confusion over designations, and I'm not sure where we're going. It's in their fucking head, know. man. God, do you, do you guys feel that? I've just got an awful headache. It's like needling in my brain something dieting. Be advised that we believe you may be experiencing some detrimental cognito effects. 
Keep moving forward and we'll give you more information as we receive it. Keep moving forward. I understand you just told me you don't remember what you're doing here. Go ahead and just power through this, Chief. Just we got keep, you. Just keep going. Yeah, we got your back. Just do your thing, man. We're right here. Noted. Come on, be advised that Foxtrot has a, a terrible headache, I think. Are we going in the right direction? We can't see out here. You are roughly 150 meters from the head of the Entity Alpha. You should be getting a visual soon. Come on, I don't see anything. Where are we? Where are we? You're almost there, Alpha. Dive team, be advised, we're picking up movement from the Entity on radar. I... Barry, I don't see anything down here. What are we supposed to be looking? All I can see is darkness. I... Barry, I don't see anything down here. What are we supposed to be looking? All... All I can see is darkness. There's a chill, foul wind blowing, pushing me towards a brink I can't see. Shut up, shut up, shut up! Come on, Bravo is unresponsive, requesting immediate cessation of mission. Wait a second. Yo, this man is in here tripping, bro. Can you get us out? Flipping the fuck and out. And where am I going? How do I get out? They're just like, yo, man. Keep going. Just keep going, bro. We got you. We're right here. On the edge of nothingness, inches from oblivion, there's a... If a man tells me I am inches from oblivion, I'm going home. I'm leaving. That's yeah. not a good thing to say to no, me, man. Not even a little bit. There's <laughs> sickness in my mind that I know can't be cured. What does that mean? Beyond me is only darkness and a single pair of dark eyes. What? What are you saying? Dive team, we're going to pull you back in immediately. We have reason to believe that Barry, is that you? How can it be? I it's a little late, don't you think? Your, I can hear something out there. Out for your light. Get your fucking silence. Only silence, my consciousness coming undone, and only, and only, and only. Dive team, something is moving towards you, repeat. Something is moving towards you, pretend to return. Ah, oh, this is shit, I can't see. How far are we from the- It's right there! It's right there, fuck! What are you both doing? Fuck! And only yeah. the eel remains. Damn. Alpha? Yeah. Alpha. Bravo, Foxtrot, do any of you hear us? Damn. Oh, thank God. Bravo, you need to speak up. We can't shh. Shut the fuck up, man. Something has bound up the winch between you and us. We can't. It's opening its mouth. It's so dark. There's a. Where am I? What? Barry, how can it be? I shoveled up. I only swim. Get away. There's only darkness. Swim. Only. There is a sudden tension in the. It's a little bit hard to tell the difference in who's talking, like in those exchanges. It's all him, but yeah, yeah, but you you get the idea. He's being eaten. Yes. Yeah. Attach the Stravinsky. 09 Foxtrot Radio goes Also, the drawing is a little bit less cute here in this uh, rendition of the Dratini. Yes, I see the teeth. Foxtrot. Foxtrot. Alpha. Bravo. Talk to me. Stay calm. What happened? It ate him. He's gone. He took him home. He... But damn it, Alpha, what are you doing? Alpha? Cut the fucking goddamn tether, Alpha. It's pulling us in. Who? Fuck! Total radio silence for 30 seconds. Tether attached to the Stravinsky is pulled free from its moorings and disappears. Alpha, Bravo, do you copy? Alpha, Bravo, do you copy? This is Bravo. I'm I'm floating in the dark. I can I can see shapes moving through the fog, but they're hard to make out. I cut my tether. Alpha wouldn't. I think he's gone. I don't see his light anymore. Acknowledged. We're coming to. Hang on. Just let me think for a second. Cognition. This thing. It doesn't work around it. Your brain can't form thoughts. Oh, it hurts. It's like dying and... Bravo, do you have eyes on the entity? It's in my head, guys. Coiled up in there like a snake. And something about it is... Caustic. I can see it just in front of me. It's not doing anything. It isn't moving. Just hanging there with its mouth open. I think it's finished eating. That fluid is seeping through the skin around its head, about a meter back. Just looking at the stuff is making me... The room is spinning. I feel nauseous. My head isn't working right. <laughs> There's an abortion under the floorboards and another in the... Si Wait, this is wrong. That wasn't me. The Who said fuck that? are you talking about? My... I'm gonna collect a sample. Hang on. I hate shit like that. He said, I'm gonna collect a sample. Sir, go back to the goddamn He's still submarine. still doing his job. Let that man do his job. No! Finish the mission. I hate shit like that, though. People just start talking about nonsensical shit. It's yeah. an abortion out of the floor. We're like, that sentence doesn't mean... It means Anything. absolutely nothing. Those kind of horror things that do those do, does that to people. Like, it just makes them just start speaking nonsense in sentence form. Yeah. Gibberish, I'm fine with. Right. 
you know? But actual sentences that just don't mean anything. It freaks me out. Because that means your mind's just not working right. And I'm, yeah. sure that, I'm sure that feeling is really fucking horrifying for the yeah. person. Yeah. Bravo, we're going to send out a crew to get you. Just hold on. Oh no, don't do that. Not. You have to be trained to not feel the things I'm feeling. Otherwise it will get into you. Maybe it will anyway, who knows. It feels like the end of my world down here, fellas. My Damn. heart's really going off the charts and I think I'm dying. Just. I've got a sample. I'll attach it to one of those little balloons and let it float up. You'll be able to get it later. <laughs> those little I balloons. Around that stuff. It, it doesn't... Your mind, it... Uh... Bravo. That last like moan and heavy breathing is what I felt like before I passed out that last time. At the place? Mm-hmm. I think yeah. that's why that also triggers me a little bit too, where it's just like that feeling of just like you're trying to like stay conscious and you just like pass out. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'm dying. I'm dying. I know I'm dying. This is it. I just want to get away from here, you know. It occurs to me. <laughs> Don't send anyone else out here. It's so dark. Bravo. Over the next half hour, the SCPF Stravinsky attempted to approach O9 Bravo with no success. Command continued to attempt to communicate with O9 Bravo, but Bravo grew increasingly unintelligible before eventually going completely silent. Bravo's radio stayed active over the next three days and intermittent breathing could be heard until the radio ceased functioning. Yeah. Just out there. Addendum. 3000.2. The Aztec Protocol. File of relevance. Interview with 05 3 available. Administrator clearance accepted. Dr. Knott sits opposite 05 3. 05 3 places an audio recorder on the table between them. First of all, Doctor, congratulations on your promotion to senior researcher and your level four security clearance. Hey, make that money, bitch. What's wrong with you? <laughs> what? <laughs> Promotions mean money, right? Dude, Why I you wouldn't want to work for the foundation, more or less be promoted in the foundation. I'm good. Let that nigga get his Ferrari. I feel you, though. It's open to you now. Now, Doctor. The O5 have seen the file for SCP-3000 and have approved its classification as thermium, given its nature. However, they would like a further explanation on the Aztec Protocol. The file submitted was somewhat lacking in information. All we have seen is that it has serious potential during testing, but the death toll is heavy, both in procuring Y909 and refining it. So they're talking about that liquid that that guy sent up to the surface or whatever? Mm -hmm. And they're just doing tests on, because they're going to try to use that shit. For, because that seems like a great idea. For their other experiments to try to get people to forget stuff because of the properties that it, it had. So they were just Got like, it. good, so we can use this, is what you're saying. That's all they heard. <laughs> I'm going to ask some questions, and I would like you to answer them as thoroughly as you can, please. Of course, sir. What is the Aztec Protocol? What is Y909? and what have you discovered about it? The Aztec Protocol is a method for gathering and processing the Y909 compound. It's a thick, brackish, gray fluid that SCP-3000 excretes as part of its metabolism. We don't know the exact method by which it does this, but we have some ideas, and none of them are great for us. Initially, we thought it was bleeding. The first team we sent down to look at SCP-3000 went down to collect blood samples for analysis. When SCP-3000 attacked and consumed them, and began producing more of the substance, we realized that we were looking at something different entirely. It's definitely not blood. It's more akin to prion slurry. It's extremely toxic, and spending too much time around the stuff causes a lot of the same effects as exposure to SCP-3000 does. Paranoia, memory loss, suicidal thoughts, etc. Refining the raw, Y909, what the process is called eel jelly, allows us to create anesthetics more effective than any anesthetic, the anesthetics program, that's the what they call it. This organization. Herein lies the ethical dilemma. SCP 3000 only creates Y909 after eating, right? And it only eats humans, right? Yeah, remember when I said we had some ideas about how it does this? 
Some of our biologists have hypothesized that SCP-3000 is breaking down whatever makes sapient creatures sapient, filtering it through some part of its skin, and the residual either is what we collect. Ah, oh, okay. Really That's pretty, pretty crazy, actually. We've taken radiographs of this thing, trying to see what's going on inside of it. It's full of dead human bodies. It's not digesting them at all. It's doing something else. Yeah, the they're just there. Inside of it. When we first started using But it's like, it, it must... It's, it's weird to me, though, that the people never get digested if it eventually stops producing. Why? Why 909? Yeah. It's weird that he's... That the people aren't being digested then. They're not being digested. I mean... In our sense of the word. They're not being digested in like our sense of the word, but maybe they're being digested because if you're breaking down whatever makes sapient creatures sapient, right? Right. I mean, at some point they stop being sapient. So oh, I guess you just like body parts in there. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But if he Makes doesn't sense. eat them for, because right, because they said he doesn't yeah. need to eat right. to maintain his bodily function. So he's literally just eating them for their consciousness. Right, right. So once their consciousness is gone, he would yeah. stop producing the stuff. Yeah, yeah, No, that makes sense. Why no, that makes sense. In our agnostics programs, we tried to synthesize it. We got something close to that, what we were looking for. Why 919? But the side effects were catastrophic. The amnestics would work. We could get people to forget events, people, and so on. And they did it. But then they would start to forget other things too. The mental dis the mental deterioration would rapidly increase. And it's happening with him too. Left, mm -hmm. And then they would die. A few of the researchers thought we might be able to figure out how to decrease the severity of those side effects. But the cost to continue those trials would have been astronomical. And the program was discontinued. It's no secret what we're doing here is abhorrent. The ethics committee, the classification committee, they're all looking at ways to make this more tolerable than what it is. But the hard truth is, if we want to continue to use modern anesthetics, we have to have Y909. If we want... So it just sounds like you grab people from death row. It's funny that you said that. We'll continue what their solution is, but we'll talk about that later. Oh, okay. So have Y909 then we have to feed D-class personnel to SCP-3000. So D-class personnel first was explained to me as death row inmates. Yeah. But then was explained to me as basically if nobody is going to miss you, then you're a D-class personnel. That's awful. So people with no friends or no family or nobody that's going to miss them that have kind of went off the grid. That's awful. As D-class personnel. That's terrible. The foundation don't give a fuck. God damn. How else are we going to get Y909, man? I mean, you got to have eat, it. It's got to eat people. We need this. Dang, that's fucked up. It is fucked up, man. Sounds like the foundation is the SCP that we should all be afraid of. Ooh, the foundation is the the, the final. It's not like a tier list, but it's the final SCP. The, yeah. The Omega SCP. The ultimate SCP. Otherwise, we'd be forced to go back to the metaphorical dark ages where we were anesthetizing people with opiates and chloroform. This <laughs> nigga pissed, bro. He's developing pissed. developing ROVs that should be able to take over the job of collecting the raw material from our dive teams. This will eliminate any chance of accidental casualties like we've had in the past. And it's a good first step. For everything else, only time will tell. This is enlightening information, Doctor. Maintain the protocol for now and collect more for the use of amnestics. I want you to take full responsibility for the remote operated vehicle program you are working on. And I will contact you in two weeks expecting a positive update. Until then, keep using the MTF. For God's sake, don't kill all of our men. And leave some D-class for over... Bugging with him and the 001 issue will go to shit. Headlock. Okay, that was pretty cool. Yeah, it was pretty nice, right? Yeah. How'd that not make the list of SCPs you wouldn't want to be real, <laughs> right? Definitely should have been on the list. Well, how do you feel? Because everybody was convinced you were just going to die when you watched this video. Um, you know, I think that if it had been an animation rather than an illustration, 
that shit would have tripped me out. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think the illustration added the right element of creepiness to it without making it so that like I literally have to have a heart attack. But that SCP is creepy. Yeah. Like not only like how many advantages do you need, nigga? Everything. Like, you're big as fuck, and now also you have to make me crazy. Like fuck you. Makes you forget. It's even worse than it makes you paranoid. Yeah. And it makes you just lose memories. It's fucked up. And then and it doesn't even need to eat. It's just doing it for the fun of it. it for funsies. Like I just, I just want to make this shit that I make sometimes, and I need some, you to do it. Some people just want to see the world burn. Word, man. word. The only thing that would make it scarier is if it had more of like an active communication. Active malevolence. No, well, no. I just mean like if it could send text messages and shit. <laughs> you know, or like use people as messengers. Coming for your bitch. Right, and then it eats you. <laughs> You know, because SCPs like that that are pretty isolated aren't really as terrifying. But like, like the Cthulhu one wasn't that scary either. But it was it, it was scary that it spreads cultishly from person to person in their dreams. Yeah. You know, it's like almost like a plague kind of a thing. But that stays pretty. You need to contact. You need to come in contact with it. Yeah. If you yeah. stay look, if you stay out of his hood, you good. Yeah. Don't be sipping tea in his hood. Yeah. Don't don't sip tea anywhere near his hood. <laughs> So that was good. I'm glad you liked it though. That was good. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Comment section. Let us know what other SCPs I need to be checking out. For her. Out. For me. Think of Skitten. Channel Skitten through your SCP Is filter. Is there like a glitter SCP? Is there like a an earrings SCP? There's a there's a tickle monster. That sounds awful. That doesn't even need to be an SCP. What? Why are you insulting it already? Why does that sound awful? Tickling is awful. It's cute. It's a cute thing. You know, I don't like to be tickled. But it's a cute, fun-bringing SCP. I would stab it. Okay. Well, I don't think this is for you. <laughs> we'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> start, just start stabbing SCPs. That's probably not a good idea. Is that not how you're supposed to deal with this? <laughs> I don't think not? so.